welcome to the 40 day plan um 40 day journey a new life plan welcome on board guys um it's been a long time we miss you uh because we've been so busy doing so many other things and that's why we haven't been with you but we're back now we are i would say quarter way gone so we're nearly there um it's been a really long journey and we're more than happy to get down with it and finish it so that we all reap from the benefits of this book um today is day 31 now if you're with us on instagram um as usual what happens is the battery goes on us because it's usually very lengthy and so it stops and we just carry on with the uh, youtube uh, recording that we always do so please feel free to go to youtube and watch this if the instagram goes off but as usual we love having you live and um, if you have any questions and you want us to answer immediately feel free to ask us otherwise the, you can always send us messages on youtube as well so today is day 31 and we're gonna go straight on to it because um, we haven't got much time to to spare we're already nearly midnight in the uk time and we've got a lot of activities during the day so we're gonna just take it as quickly as we can so day 31 understanding your shape remember we talked about shaping in day 30 or chapter 30 um if i can go back to that word shape again it was really nicely written the way he presented it he yes shape it was spiritual gifts for s h for heart um abilities for a p for personality and e for experience so we're just picking on that shape again. It says understanding your shape. So you shaped, um, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. And that's Psalm 139 um, uh, verse 13. So again, as usual, he, he gives us a little passage to reflect on. You shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb, and that's Psalm 139, verse 13. So only you can be you. That's what he's telling us. Only you can be you. Um, God designed each of us so there will be no duplication in the world. So there is no duplication of who we are in the world. Only you can be you. That's a very powerful statement. Only you can be you. Um, no one has the exact mix of things that make you unique or different. So nobody else has the exact combination of, of what makes you who you are. Um, this means no one else on this earth will ever be able to play the role God has planned for you. So remember we have all been given a role on this earth and he's trying to remind us clearly that only you can be you and no one else, therefore, can have that combination that plays who you are. Um, if you don't make your unique contribution, it will not be made. That's just the conclusion. Because only you has that uniqueness that makes you who you are. If you don't do that role that you've been uniquely created for, that means that role will never be played. That means when you leave this earth, you're living with it because you haven't used it. So the Bible says there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, different ways of serving and different abilities to perform the service. And you remember I just said last chapter we looked at shape which I've explained what it is. So now he is beginning to break down the shaping. He says shape, applying your abilities. That's what we're going to look at now. We are now going to be looking at how we can apply our abilities. Now we look at shape, where you apply your abilities. Your abilities are the natural talents you were born with. So whatever you are able to do being ability, these are your natural talents that you have been born with. So your abilities are the natural talents you were born with. Some people have natural abilities with words. So some of us are so good at using our mouth to talk. And I can just, think of so many people I know that are really great at talking. Um, 
one of my daughters, my second daughter, she is so good at expressing herself that you can never argue with her because she wins all the time. And from childhood, I said to her, you are going to be a lawyer. And she's studying law right now in university. So that's her natural gift. Well, my first one, she, wa she wants to talk about something, but it all sits in her mind. And, and most times she bottles it in. And when she now feels really pressured and she wants to express herself, is a lot of emotions coming out. That's just who she is. And so these are two people I know with completely different abilities and uniqueness and talents. And it says, they came out of the womb talking. So he's given an example that some people were natural, they have natural abilities with words and they came out of the womb talking. <laughs> that made me laugh. Other people have natural athletics, um, excelling in physical coordination. So some people are so good at athletics. Uh, my young son will be a good example for me again. He is so good at when he gets on that track, he's quick with his feet. When he gets, gets on the football pitch, he's very good with his legs. So this is just something he was born with. And now when you know what you were born with, it's for you to work with it, to be able to make it come out and become the best part of you. So others are good at mathematics. He's given us examples. Some people are great with music. And some people are great with mechanics. So again, music, I always look at Beyonce and I look at other musicians. They were born to pick up those notes. They were born to stand on the stage and perform. That's who they are. And if you look at the history of Beyonce, you will notice she started doing this from a very young age, when she was even three or two years old. So this is something she was born with. He said, when God wanted to create the world, and all the ingredients for worship, including the church as well. He wanted to create the world and the church and all the ingredients for worshiping him. He provided artists, he provided craftsmen who were shaped with the skill and the ability, the knowledgeability, uh, the uh, knowledge in all kinds of crafts to make artistic designs. And this is in making the church become what it is. And to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. So. Today, God still bestowed the ability and thousands of others so people can serve him. So God gives these abilities to so many people so that we can all use these abilities to serve him. He says, all our abilities come from God. Even abilities used to, to sin. This is quite interesting. So you, you know, obviously in, in church and in um uh, Christianity we talk about sin sin being when you go against what God wants you to do he says even that ability to sin came from God so even abilities used to sin are God given they are just being misused or abused so when you go and sin which is your ability now you use some smartness you know I'll give you an example people who love to lie so again you have that ability to talk and really talk fast and people can quickly pick up on what you said, that ability could be used only for good instead of using it for bad. But because you've been given that ability by nature, by God, you now think, ah, let me use it to do the wrong thing. So now you're using that ability that God gave you to, to sin. So that ability was given by God. The first ability to do certain things, certain things well. Since our natural abilities are from God, they are just as important and as spiritual as our spiritual gifts. So these natural abilities are as important to us as our spiritual ability to listen and learn from God. Since our natural abilities are from God, okay, I just said that one. The only difference is that we were given it at birth. So this natural ability to do this and do that that we just explained was something that we were given at birth. So it just came with us. The most common excuse we give for not serving God is that I don't have any abilities to offer. And so many people have said this to me. Most times when I say to people, you know what, use your natural talents, use your natural abilities and do something great. But I don't know anything that I'm good at. He says that is not true. That is not true at all. He says we have dozens 
hundreds of untapped, unrecognized, and unused abilities that are living, you know, that are lying dormant inside us. And I find this comment so, so powerful. I've actually put a post of it on Facebook. We have dozens, hundreds of untapped, unrecognized, and unused abilities that are lying dormant inside us. Now, I want you, if nothing else today, to think about this statement over and over. We have it. It's in all of us. He goes further to explain. A lot of studies have revealed that the average person has from 500 to 700 different abilities and skills. Now, this is really awesome. It's made me think over and over. It practically changed my day. When I read this, I felt so good. We have between 500 to 700 abilities in us. Far more than we can even imagine. And you know what's so exciting about this? He hasn't said, because you are black, you have these abilities. Because you are white, you have these abilities. Because you're Asian, you have these abilities. Because you're educated, you have this. He hasn't defined it. He just said, all of us have between 500 to 700 abilities dormant inside us. Now, that gives me so much hope for everyone. For instance, our brain can store 100 trillion facts. Now, imagine that amount of information. 100 trillion. We're not saying billion. We're saying trillion. 100 trillion facts. There was a book I read one time which was talking about, it says use both sides of your brain. And it gave similar statistics as well, which um, when I was reading this, I nearly was going to check that just to reconfirm it. But because I didn't have much time, I decided, no, let me focus on this book. And maybe at another time, I'll mention that one. But 100 trillion, 100 trillion of facts is in our brain. Our mind can handle 15,000 decisions in a second. This is really shocking. I just want us to really reflect on this fact. 15,000 decisions in a second, our mind can handle that. When our digestive system is working, so somehow our digestive system is connected to how we think and how our brain functions. So again, this is another part of my life that I'm so excited about. And when I read this, it made me really think, no wonder I could deal with so much. Because you find even on our channel here, we are constantly doing so many things. Because I wake up one morning and I feel like something. And then I wake up another morning and I feel like something. So this is really exciting. It just shows that anybody can be like that too. Today I've just done a video on eating healthy and I've, I've taken on this 14-day program of you know, losing weight, unnecessary toxins that we store in our body. And the focus was just drinking lots of water to send it out, send out the toxins. So if he's telling us that our mind could take on 15,000, 15,000 decisions in a second when our digestive system is working, now that gives me so much hope. Because only today I started drinking the water, which the video it will come up soon, you say. As I've drank so much water today, my body feels a lot more calmer and cooler. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, I must be onto something good today. But that's what it is. Our digestive system connects with our mind in order for us to be able to make decisions. This is really something that is worth thinking about. And so it says, our nose can smell up to 10,000 different odors. 10,000. This nose can pick up 10,000 different smells. Our torch can detect item 1 over 225,000 of an inch thick. I could not imagine that. 1 over 25,000 inch thick. But our hand can feel it. Our tongue can taste one part of quinine in 2 million parts of water. So if you put 2 million parts of 2 million parts of water 
and then you drop quinine in it. It says our tongue can taste it. We are a bundle of incredible abilities and an amazing creation from God. Part of our job is to realize our abilities and know it for serving God. So now, does that tell you something about who you are? I mean, reading this just made me realize what an amazing creation that God has made us into. What an amazing machine that we are. Because reading that book as well, the one I was telling you, using different parts or two parts of our brain, you begin to look at the human body in another light. Now, I'm doing a course in nutrition as well, and we looked at the internal organs, especially as regards digestion. It was shocking the amount of detailed information that goes into after we've eaten the food and what goes on in the large intestine and small intestine and, and the pancreas and the liver and the kidney. So it's like when you look at the human being, there is so much work that God has done with us. And yet, the world is seven billion and we are being told that not one of us is the same in any form. It makes you then look at God and say, I, I, you are awesome. It makes you then really look at yourself and respect that person that you are. And what he's reminding us is how we can then use these abilities, these unique things that he's gifted us with to create a better world. He says, every ability can be used for God's glory. And Paul said, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all for the glory of God. Because if you can look at yourself, reflect on yourself, and look at all this uniqueness that makes who you are, why then do you think you have control of who you are? Bible is filled with examples of different abilities that God uses for his glory. Here are a few mentioned in the scriptures. Artistic ability, architectural ability, administering ability. And he goes on. Baking, boat making, candy making, debating, designing, embalming, embroidery, engraving, farming, fishing, gardening, leading, managing, masonry, making music, making weapons, needlework, painting, planting, philo philosophizing, machinability, inventing, carpentry, sailing, selling, being a soldier, tailoring, teaching, writing, writing literature, poetry, and the list goes on. So this is just to give you an idea of how there is so much out there for us to do. So much. And each of these things we've been uniquely designed to be able to do them. It is to perform. There are different abilities to perform service. But the same God gives us ability to all for their particular service. The same God gives us this ability to do these things. God has a place in his church and this world where your specialities can shine and you can make a difference. So out of that long list that I've just read out to you and you find where you belong, there is a place for you on this earth to use those abilities. This is why for me, I always wonder why people sit back and say, I am bored. I can't find what to do. I've searched everywhere, I cannot find a job. They, we were all born with abilities. That's what this book is reminding us. And so with all this long list, there is something out there for you to be great at. Something that you can use to glorify the world, to make God understand that he did not waste his time designing you and bringing you out here. It's up to you to find that place. That's what he's reminding us. Because these specialities can make you shine. It's up to you to find out what that is. God gives some people the ability to make a lot of money. This is another stage now we're looking at. Moses told the Israelites, Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. 
It is God who gives you that ability to produce wealth. People with disability are good at building a business, making deals or sales and reaping a profit. So because you have that ability to make money, these are the unique things that come out with you. If you have business ability, you should be using it for God's glory. So that's the advice. So knowing that you can create amazing things and make money out of it, use it to glorify God. That's the biggest advice is given here. First, realize your ability come from God and give him the credit. So whenever you're doing anything and you find you're so good at this thing, remember your, your strength is coming from God and he wants you to remember to use that to give God the credit. Tell your audience, listen, I could not have done this on my own without God giving me the strength to do it. And that's what I remember to talk about all the time too. That I sit here today with you and I'm chatting with you about these things. God gave me that ability to do it. And that's why I use it to glorify Him. Second, use your business to serve a need of those, of others, and to share your faith with unbelievers. So this ability, this, this unique thing that you're good at, use it to serve others. So for us again, I have the ability to teach how to braid, how to weave, how to add extensions to hair, how to care for natural hair. This is the package I used to create that for you. This package. 30 different DVDs in this, 21 different skills for you to pick up. That's my ability and I've been able to share it with you. So now it's for you to pick it up. If your ability isn't caring for hair, the answer is here. So he says, use your ability to serve the need of others and to share your faith with unbelievers. So if you know, for instance, your ability was to preach the Bible or you understand the Bible better, or you just love sharing God's words, use it. Use it to share with people who do not still understand it. And that's what I do here as well. Because I believe totally in the power of God. When you look at yourself and look at the amazing creation you become, why would anyone still have doubt to trust God to be there for them? Third, it says return a 10% of the profit to God as an act of worship to grow with the ministry. Again, I know in the Bible there are places where people call it, um, I've forgotten what they call it. And you have to give a percentage of your earnings. Tight. So if you if you find that you're starting something new and you find that you, there's so much coming in, give some percentage out. Give something out. I, I do that if I start a new business and I find I've just got some good money out of it. I want to give some out. I'll happily give to people the beggars on the street. They may, some of them may not be using it for good reasons or good purposes, but you have given to someone who needed something. You take it to church till you give. Give in church. Because as you give, you're helping to grow the church. And when you grow the church, you're growing the word of God. You're growing God's presence in the world. So there's so many ways you can give back to society. That's what he's trying to explain here. Number four, make your goal to be a kingdom ministry, a ministry builder, rather than just a wealth builder. So if you find you're great at making money, yeah, now you've got so much money. It's not just about making money. You should also contribute to grow the kingdom of God in the form of making sure you share your message with other people. Because by other people hearing your experiences in life and hearing your story, they will believe too. And you're helping to save souls. So, the next thing he says, what I'm able to do, God wants me to do it. Anything that you are able to do, God actually wants you to do it. And a good example is me chatting with you with this book. God gave me that word. Read this book, share it. And I'm here still sharing it. I promise you, 40 days, I'm still on this journey. You are the only person on earth who can use your abilities. He reminded us that from the beginning. No one else can play your role because they don't have the unique shape that God has given you. So that uniqueness that makes you who you are, no one else can play. The Bible says, 
God equips you with all you need for doing this well. So anything you are able to do, God has pre-planned it. He's put that in you. To discover God's will for your life, you should seriously examine what you are good at. So now this answers all the people who have always said, I don't know what I'm good at. He says you should take your time. Relax in some, maybe go out to the seaside or relax or maybe just go into, just find a place that is just you with your emotions, just you with your spirit and find out those things that make you happy. Those things that when you do them, you feel good. You will find that thing that you are good at. So if God hasn't given you the ability to carry a tune, like musicians, he isn't going to expect you to be an opera singer. So he's not going to force you. God never forces any of us to do anything. If he has not given you that voice, don't sit there and look at the opera singer and say, I want to sing like that. It wasn't part of you. You were not given that gift. And you find people who are already given that gift, they don't take any effort, they just sing. God will never ask you to dedicate your life to a task you have no talent for. So anything you have no talent for, don't waste your energy because you just don't have the talent. It's not there. On the other hand, the abilities you have are a strong indication of what God wants you to do with your life. So whatever you find yourself great at, that is a strong understanding of this is what God wants me to do. There are clues to knowing God's will for you. If you're good at designing, if you're good at recruiting, if you're good at drawing or organizing, it is a safe assumption that God's plan for your life includes those skills somehow. So anything you're good at, that's an indication that God wants you to really do that. And a good example would definitely be my daughter, uh, my third daughter who is so good at drawing and she is constantly, there are so many other courses she's studying, but that's the only thing you see her every minute she's drawing. And I just let her be because I know that is her natural ability. God doesn't waste abilities. He matches our calling and our capabilities. Our abilities were not given just to make a living. So don't think the ability you have is just for you to go and make money and survive on earth. God gave us for our ministry. He gave us for us to use it to bless other people as well. Peter said, God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other. Passing on to others God's many kinds of blessings. So when God gave you the uniqueness that he gave you, he wants you to use that to share with others. And when you do that, you're actually passing God's blessings to other people. In his church, um, this man who wrote this book, remember this is the book we're dealing with, The Purpose Driven Life. Um, he has a church, they call it Saddleback Church. And he said at the time he was writing this book, 7,000 people were already using their abilities in his ministry, providing every kind of service, repairing donated cars to be given to the needy, finding the best deals for the church purchases, landscaping, organizing files, designing art, pro, um, program building, providing health care, preparing meals, co uh, composing songs, teaching music, writing grant proposals, coaching teams, doing research for summons, translating themes, and hundreds of other specialized tasks. Now, this is so amazing because I just wish we had similar thing in Africa, where a church is actually encouraging people to, to draw out their gifts so they can use it for the benefit of everybody else, including themselves. But now what we tend to find there is all about bring your money. All, all the church is talking about is bring money. They're not really encouraging people to 
reflect on who they are and contribute what they are to the church, not just money. But that's an example of what he's done, where he is. New members are told, whenever new people are coming, whatever you're good at, you should be doing it for your church. Whatever you're good at, you should be doing it for your country. So I'm wishing we could also use this type of example to see how we run our countries as well. Because everybody, generally, we have been given something by nature from birth, some talent, some ability. Whatever those things are, if we use it without hiding them and locking them away and marching around life and saying how desperate we are and how nothing works and how nobody cares for us, if we use the natural talent God gave us, today we'll probably all be self-sufficient. We'll probably all be doing something to benefit each other. Because you might be good at singing and I will attend your concert and then I'm good at sewing and I will make the clothes you wear and I'm good at making your hair and I'll get your hair ready for you to go to perform on stage so everybody's contributing to the other life is good but no we don't do that we we'll rather just sit down and complain how we cannot find jobs and forget the fact that God gave us something from heaven from the day we were born, there was something planted in us. And that's why we're good at that thing. Shape, using your personality. And that's the next stage. He said, we generally don't realize how unique each of us, us, um, each of us are. DNA molecules can write, unite in an infinite number of ways. The number is 10 to... 2,000, not 2,000, I think this is 2 billion. The number is 10 to 2 billion 400,000 to the power. This number is the likelihood that you are ever, you never ever find somebody that's just like you. That's how the DNA works. If you were to write out this number with each zero being one inch wide, you need a strip of paper 37,000 miles long in order for you to be able to perform this mathematics. Some scientists have guessed that all the particles in the universe are probably less than 10 with 76 zeros behind it, far less than the possibilities of the DNA. Just to tell you what makes who we are. Our uniqueness is a scientific fact of life. When God made each of us, he broke the mold. So what he's saying is, each time he made one person, he broke that mold. He said, yeah, that one is done. Let me move on to another. So we are not what you would call, you know, like when you go to a factory and you go mass production. We're not mass production. We are not massly produced. We are not... Not even in one family where you get some mothers have 12 children, 15 children. I've heard of such things. Not one of those children are alike in any form. I have four children and trust me, four of my children are all different. That just tells you what we're talking about here. So when God made all of us, each of us, he broke the mold because we were designer made. You know, when you go and buy designer bag and designer shoes and designer this and designer that, people who love those kind of things, love them because they are unique. And want that because it's different. Nobody else has that. That's designer, tailor made, handmade, because they spent time to create that uniqueness that made that product. That's who we are. God made us and he broke that mold. And that's why none of us will ever be the same. That tells you how unique you are. 